Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today's video is sponsored by my Patreons. That's uh, it has been a while. Uh, we have a really old box here that we're going to be having a look at today. So why is this sponsored? Well, because we're going to be putting something in it that is sponsored. Um, you've actually seen this project before, but you haven't seen it before because I haven't told you about it before. Because it has to do with this project, which you have seen before. This is my attempt on making a tiny storage server. So what we did was we took this Lenovo tiny machine, we put a tiny little uh, mini PCI slot in there and we connected it to an external PCI slot and we put a very nice and awesome rate controller in there with these connections and we did that for a purpose. I must admit I've been planning this for quite a while and you haven't seen it all. And no one ever asked why I did it this way with external connections like that. It would have been so much easier to just use internal connection and have a bunch of disks laying around, but I did it with external connections for a reason. And we're gonna see that. And that's where this box come in, because um, this box has a very special feature that we're gonna have a look at right now. So the main feature of this box and why we're looking at it right now is because it um, across is 37 centimeters and 37 centimeters should be able to go down through this way uh, so it fits in the bunker uh, we need to take the, the the foot of it because that is too wide but yeah this is 35 centimeters but there's a couple of centimeters to spare and we can also take the lid off so this is the foot that it sits on and uh, we can open this and we can take that off so it becomes a little bit smaller so um, yeah that's why I think this is brilliant other than that it's just a PC case more or less uh, it's not even a PC it's um, it's full of uh, CD-ROM drives this thing is so old that it's from a time where it wasn't uh, it wasn't normal to have a CD-ROM drive in your PC just yet. These were actually really good quality CD-ROM drives back in when they were new, mm -hmm. but in office environments it wasn't normal to have a CD-ROM drive in your PC. This was something that you only had in your high-end workstation at that time. A CD-ROM drive like this might be three, four hundred dollars. So this thing is a CD-ROM drive library. It has these seven CD-ROM drives in here and it has a little machine down here that will make the CD-ROM drives available on the network. So you could, with some software on your Windows 95 or Windows 3.1 machine, you would be able to map a CD-ROM drive. You could have the CD-ROM drive with all your clip arts for your text editing, or you could have some, some maps and other stuff like at the time it was practiced that like new rules and laws was um, came out on CD and the newest CD was put in here so if you needed to look up a law you could do that uh, map the CD look up the law unmap the drive again and someone else could use it so this 7 CD library meant that several hundred people could access a CD-ROM drive at some point and they didn't have to have this very expensive CD-ROM drive in their PC. I have no idea how the licensing of the CDs worked, if that was allowed, but I guess that was before anyone ever worried about that. But the box is very nice. Let's see the back. Very nice metal thing. And it has a network port down here and a normal power supply. I wouldn't expect this to be anything special. And it has a fan and nothing special whatsoever. And if anyone is curious, this one is from June the 19th, 1987. So a good 26 years old. I'm sure some of you is younger than this dude. Um, I remember when this was new, it was fantastic to, uh, to be able to map the CD-ROM drive on your computer and use it for... Yeah, we had like uh, encyclopedias on these, so you could go and get very smart 
on on this. I think there was the there was the Microsoft Encyclopedia, and here in Denmark we had something called Ledemann's Lexicon. It was a, another competing all in Danish lexicon. Uh, yeah, that was before the internet became um, as big as it is today. Oh, uh, you needed CD-ROM drives. Uh, today, not so much. So, I'm not going to be using this as a CD-ROM tower. There's not really a need for that. I'm going to be using it for a, a DAS. I'm going to be making my own DAS out of this box. And that's where the nice Patreon sponsorships comes in, because they um, they do not know, but they they um, they gave me this, and we have seen this before in a previous video. Because uh, yeah, I've been planning this. Uh, now I used that one for something else, so we're gonna be using this one for this project. And in here, there is a very awesome SAS expander. And what a SAS expander is, it takes one connection in. And if we open up the plastic here and take the, the card out here, we can see that it has the same square 12 gigabit per second uh, connections as the other one has. So I'll be able to take a cable from here. Oh, here's the part that goes into the tiny storage server. You see the same connections. It actually has four of them. I might have done a little bit of overkill there, uh, but it's the same connection on this one. So this one can go in this box and it just happens to be that this is an all by itself unit. It does go into a PCI slot, but that is just for power. Alternatively, you can just power it from this Molex connection here and it does what it's supposed to do. You put in one connection here and you get access to all of these connections, which is like seven connections over there. I think one of them is an input and the other ones are outputs, as I remember it. And that's why there, there's a lot of cables for them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which makes sense. So this is a cable that, that goes in to, to these connections on the board here. Clickety click, and it goes out to four hard drives, like that. So I'll be able to put in a bunch of hard drives when this card is in the machine or oh, it's probably just a box. It's a nice box for the project. It's a little bit big, but it's not too big. It will fit. I'm not sure I got that explained very well. What this does is that you connect one connection in here and you get access to all of these drives. So on each of these connections, or at least six of them, uh, four drives can be uh, connected, so six times four. So six times four is at least 24 drives. I don't think we can fit 24 drives in this one, but I have some stuff uh, in order for that to come. It hasn't reached me yet, but we're gonna build that when it arrives. I think um, we should open the box up and see what possibilities we have for putting this in. I do not remember if I've ever had this apart. All the screws are not very tight, so I might have. Uh, maybe I have to get rid of the foot to get it apart. We will know in seconds. Nope, nope, it comes apart without. <clears throat> okay, I have a cloth here because sitting so long, it was, was rather dirty. Uh, I don't want to reveal how much of a Dirty pick I am, so I'll just remove. Oh dear. Okay. Maybe I'll reveal a little bit. It's ever so slightly dusty, but as I haven't used it, this is uh, it's work-related dirt. <clears throat> you can see all the high-quality CD-ROM drives sitting right there. At the bottom, there is the the computer unit. It is probably more or less a, a tiny computer in there. I must admit, I kept this box just because I thought it was cool. Like it had a LED and you could open it up and it had a lot of CD-ROM drives. I didn't have any plans of ever using it for anything, but yeah, that's a cool box. Hops. And I snatched it for that purpose. It was going to the trash. 
Uh, I think we have a better view from the other side. Oh, actually not, but that's the controller unit and then there is the one, two, three, four, five, six and seven uh, CD-ROM drives in there. So up here we can see the, the specs for the CD-ROM drive in here and these were Panasonic and they are Scotchy drives. So this was top of the line back in and that it was 12 times speed and there's danger, there's a laser in here, be warned. So yeah, we're gonna take all of this. I was actually looking to on eBay to check if, if there was anything like this for sale and there is nothing like this for sale. That worries me a little bit. I would be less worried if it was like, well, it's $50, but there is absolutely none of them for sale that I could find. So. Oh dear, if this was several thousand dollars, I might be making a huge mistake, but I don't think so. Who would ever need this? I would be able to fit those seven CD-ROM drives on any hard drive nowadays. Uh, that was like, <laughs> was it 650 megabytes that could fit on one of those? Well, you can replace this with a cheap USB key, really cheap USB key. Might as well get to it, start removing some screws. All of these drives needs to come out and they are heavy. So when I get them out, this box is going to be a lot lighter and easier to handle. So yeah, this is built when they, uh, they cheated and they used real metal and something that wasn't too flimsy and stuff. So. Side. Oops, I have removed the screws on the CD-ROM drives from the bottom and was going up but I can see that they are sacking. Normally there is like something that the, the drive sits on and then you screw it in but they haven't done that so if I, <clears throat> if I release all of them they'll just go to the bottom all of them so I think I need to take out the, the top ones first so that we don't do that. So let's take the door off uh, and then start from the top instead. First one comes out. And here we have it. I remember when I would give an arm and a leg for one of those. So after 26 years of captivity, all seven Scotchy drives has been set free and they, they cling together in the wild not sure if their freedom is unborrowed yeah whatever so far so good i need to take the controller unit out and it's almost free but i thought i can only take out so many drives and keep it interesting which it might not have been uh, <laughs> we get the scotchy cable here um yeah you remember this mess yeah that's really great for airflow Let's power there and the connections out the back is this very rainbow colored uh, ribble cable here that comes out and then the controller unit is here maybe that was what I needed to search for That's... ah there's something here made in Sweden I'll check if this exists anywhere Oh yeah, it's that exists. Although it is discontinued, this product is no longer supported. Oh, what a shame, what a shame. I forgot about that. It works with novel netware and Windows NT, so uh, fantastic. There is even a firmware for it, but to, to get that you need to sign in. They need to know that you're an actual person and not a mummy. So yeah, that's live. And with that information, I was also able to find it here on eBay where I can see this is in Danish Krana, so don't worry, it's not that expensive. This is like 50, 50 euros, a little bit more than 50 euros, so somewhere between 40 and, well, the price goes up to about uh, 100 and 130 
dollars euros there and it even has a box with but yeah i i feel better i'm not destroying anything too expensive oh oh dear the screws just happens to fall out um i was curious uh, so this is what it looks like inside looks very nicely made uh, back in the days this was an expensive unit I see that there is room for a couple of RAM upgrades, so you might have been able to expand it with some some RAM there. I think that's for RAM. That's what we use for RAM these days. It might have been something else back then. But it's the AXSI Storepoint CD slash T Ethernet. So yeah, the, we have the Ethernet ports here. We have a normal Ethernet connection that we also use today. And then we have the, I think this was a DP15, I'm not entirely sure, but I do remember this. Might have been used for a talking ring, but I do remember some network cards uh, where it had BNC connections. Not this one, but the ones that looks like a cable for TV connection. And then it had this connector, and we had a box to put on here, which were bloody expensive and that would convert this connection to this connection so but apparently they fixed that in some other way and this is from back in the day when you were running like 10 megabits that would be able to run in these connections and and see how they're twisted so yeah yeah max performance right there so more or less this is a little computer or a controller it would have access to all the CD-ROM drives and then it would give you access to the CD-ROM drives through the network connection. It um, Well, this was before the internet was a real thing, so it wasn't like it had a web server on here or anything. It, you needed some software on the end computer and you installed that software and, and then you could go and connect to the IP number of this device or the, or the name of it and then that would translate the communication and you would be able to mount those CD-ROM drives on your system. So, yeah, 1997. Good old thinky. So I think we'll put the prison warden over there on top of the, the, the prisoners. Uh, yeah, I might hear from Raphael that he needs one of those. And <laughs> right, Raphael? Oh, I found the dust. It's in the bottom of it. And I see that it's a good thing that I opened this up because it unscrews. Okay, I can unscrew it from there and then it goes in some slots. So there's just one screw that needs to be removed to remove the bottom of it. I'm gonna leave it on for now. I just need to take the bottom off when I need it to go into the bunker. So let's get rid of this. So um, yeah, I, I really just need the power supply in here. The rest of it was just, uh, it's, it's a nice box. And the, the power supply, we need, we need that. Uh, this is an old AT power supply. This system is from before, before we were using ATX power supplies in computers. And that means that these power supplies are pretty hard to come by. But there is like eight slots in the front of this cabinet here. And we're gonna fill those up with 3.5 inch hard drives. And yeah, there's a limit to how much power they can really use. Um, so I think the power supply is gonna be plenty to do that. Uh, to be quite honest, I do not miss these scotchy cables at all. Bye bye. But we're not gonna get that much further with this project today. Uh, you can see how this card comes in handy. It um, pops right into these Molex connections and that replaces the, the other unit more or less. It kind of does the job of this box, uh, except it, it gives us SAS connections instead of network connections. I could have put a small computer in here instead. Maybe even have worked on, um, on placing the, the tiny Lenovo as a, as a part of it. But I'm gonna make it into a dash and somehow put this thing in here somewhere brilliant when I figure that out. It might be on the top of here, sitting up here, pointing, pointing backwards so that the connections comes out that way. Yeah, we need to figure that out. 
Yeah, that's actually not a bad solution to have it sitting somewhere. Somewhere where we can still get access to the connectors here. That would work out very well. So, yeah, and we have all the, the cables for it. And I need to check if they're long. If I put it up here, it would be really irritating if the cables doesn't reach the bottom of them the drives so to fit the drives in there I have ordered some of these they have been in order for quite a while um, and expensive to get here as well so it's a it's a case that goes into those five and a quarter spaces it takes up three spots but you can then put in five drives so now when I have looked at it I can see I've ordered three of these and I'll only be able to fit two of them so I get a total of 10 drives in there and then I'll, I'll have two leftover spaces but I do actually have a case for uh, for two and a half inch hard drives that I can then also put in there. This one, this is a box that Christopher from Germany sent me many years ago and it, it fits four two and a half inch hard drives in a five and a quarter slot. So I will be able to put that in, uh, something like that, have four hard drives there, and then the other ones uh, down beneath it uh, with each five drives in them, three and a half inch hard drives. So yeah, that is going to be looking really great. I don't know if I want it in the top or in the bottom yet. So this could be uh, perfect for some tiered storage. I could have some um, good sized SSDs in here and then have the, the slower spinning disks up here. That would work out really well. I just, for uh, uh, fun and giggles, mounted it in the top here. And yeah, that shows very nicely that there's plenty of room to put this controller in here. Or maybe make sure that that connector can go in. But I, th I think it, it would be able to go in like this and there would be plenty of room to have the, the connectors and the plugs going out here. So these four drives in this one would take up one of these blocks. So that would be pretty good. And then this went out the back and that would control the whole box. Uh, it could also sit on the side over here. Uh, maybe going that way. Be mounted something like that. Uh, the chassis would still go on. I don't know, this might get hot. So it might be better to have it somewhere with some airflow. So maybe upside down, like that. And then the fans of this would be able to help. Yeah, there's room for speculation here. So this was the continuation of a project that you didn't know that we were doing. <laughs> the dash for the bunker. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna have the foot down there. I don't think so. It's, I'm gonna I'm gonna save that. But other than that, oh, you can't even see the foot. Yeah, it's it's that thing. I don't expect it to tip over down there. I, when I put those two drive cages in here, I'll actually have another free spot. My clear calculation tells me. So I'll be able to put in something more than, than that one. Um, I don't have anything at the moment, but I might find something brilliant to put in there. And then we have the, the SAS expander card here, which arrived just shortly. And uh, I mentioned Raphael earlier and I didn't say who Raphael was, but Raphael is one of my patrons and he's one of the patrons that is always there when I'm hanging out on Discord. Sunday night, nine o'clock, my time, uh, Central European time. Uh, I'm usually on Patreon with the patrons for an hour and a, an hour to an hour and a half ish then it's bedtime for little Danish boys yeah I know him from Patreon so if you want to become a patron and hang out with me on discord Sunday night well it's very affordable and Raphael is one of the people that collects everything the older the better and IT related is good so so do check me out on Patreon other than that thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see the progress of this thing and do leave your brilliant suggestions in the comments below and have a nice day. Bye bye.